Hi, it's Tilly, and today we'll be making Tiefling Druid Bracers using my pattern available on Etsy. I'll put a link in the description below if you'd like to purchase them, and thank you so much for your support. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below or via Etsy. There's also a corresponding PDF booklet that will guide you through the creation process. So let's get started. This whimsical bracer for a druid reflects the natural beauty and magic of the world around us while also serving as a practical tool for the druid's adventures. A list of recommended equipment and materials are located in the PDF booklet. I will be using a Cricut Maker 3 to cut out the details easily and quickly, but you may also cut out by hand. Also in the PDF booklet is a list of completed bracer measurements. You can use the files included in the zip folder to resize them if you so choose, but I also find using grommets to tie them closed helps with a more flexible sizing. Now to the construction. For the base, I would recommend using 4mm EVA foam. You can either print out the PDF pattern via a printer or cut it out via Cricut Maker 3 as a template. Then hand trace the pattern onto the 4mm EVA foam. Next, use a box cutter to carefully cut out the base on a cutting mat. None of these cuts need to be angled. Measure the bottom of the base and mark the center. Then measure one inch above that and mark the center of that line. Repeat one more time and mark the center again. This will be where each leaf sits on the base. Carefully heat gun the base to warm it before shaping it around your arm. This will help make sure when we glue the leaves on, it will still curl around the arm. Set this aside and we can start cutting out the leaves. The leaves of the bracer will be created using 2mm EVA foam. If you're using my pattern, it will include the SVG files for the Cricut, so we'll start by uploading those SVG files to the Cricut design space. Start a new project and select Upload on the left. If you've not yet uploaded the images, you can select Upload Image and find the files on your computer. Select the file and then add to canvas. Once they've been added, you will see two shapes. The filled in black shape is going to be the base of the leaf, and the second shape is going to be the detailed design. You will need to cut each shape in the 2mm EVA foam. First, we will want to merge the detailed layer into one so that the shapes will be cut in the correct orientation. I have not merged the shapes in order to provide more flexibility if anything needs to be changed in the AI file. But do not worry, merging the detailed layers is easy. We'll want to select each shape in the detail design all at once. We can do this by holding the shift key and selecting the design shapes. Once all of the design shapes have been selected, on the right hand side, select combine and then weld. You will now only have two shapes, the base and the details. Select make it. Then you can move the cuts to fit the space and see the dimensions of the EVA foam you will need to cut out. As a friendly reminder, if you're using the knife blade for the Cricut Maker 3, do not go beyond the 11 inches mark, since this will be where the wheels will be moved to. In this example, I need to cut out an EVA rectangle that is 11 inches wide by 11 inches tall. With the files prepped, we can grab our EVA foam. First, cut out a rectangle of the 2mm EVA foam that is 11 by 11 inches, or the size of your cut area. Next, back the EVA foam with blue painter's tape. This will help with the stability of the cut as well as the transfer of the very small details. Using the wide tape will help reduce the amount of small strips you'll need to remove later. Place the tape back EVA foam onto the Strong Grip Cricut mat with the tape to the mat. With our materials ready, we can head back to the computer. Hit continue when ready to print and select craft foam as the material. If you don't have it saved, you can search for it. Leave the pressure setting as default, 
but edit the tools to select the knife blade. You may need to change your current tool for the knife blade and follow the instructions for calibrating the machine. Load in the mat and hit go to cut. This should take about 10 minutes or so per leaf. I recommend staying near the machine to make sure nothing moves around depending on how old your mat is. If your mat is losing grip, you can also use painter's tape to tape down the foam. Repeat this step for all the leaves. Once the cuts are complete, you can unload the mat and remove the excess. Using the weeding tool, carefully try to remove both pieces off of the strong grip mat. Try to keep the detail layer in one piece. The tape will help assist to keep it together. This can be a bit tricky. It doesn't have to be perfect, and you could always manually put any pieces back that move out of place. Flip over the piece with the tape still attached and put a thin layer of contact cement onto the base at the edges and the rectangle tab. The rectangle tabs are there at the bottom two leaves to help with the adhesion. Also place the glue on the details. You don't have to be extremely careful, but the more careful you are, the less glue you may see in the final product. Once the glue is tacky, carefully place the detailed piece on top of the base leaf. I find it easiest to try and line up at the center bottom. Once placed down, quickly remove the center white space with the weeder from the detailed layer. I find it's easiest working from one side to the other while placing down each piece of the detail as I go and adjusting anything as needed. The toe beans of the paws were the hardest, but if they do not come out or they're in the incorrect spot, they're relatively easy to move. The result will look like this once the excess is removed. Once everything is stuck down, you can remove the tape on both sides. Wait for the leaves to dry based on your glue instructions. You may have areas where the leaf edges don't line up perfectly when glued together. Dremel the edges to help smooth everything out and correct any misalignment. Please use proper equipment in this step, including a respirator and safety goggles. When dremeling, move in one direction and carefully align the edges. You can also heat gun to smooth out the edges and shape them. I took the opportunity to shape the corners at this point in time, and then rested them against various kitchen items to cool. Then mix a paste of quick seal and a bit of water before coating the edges carefully. This will help hide the seam. Allow them to dry. To know where to place the leaves, I first marked the center of each leaf at the bottom. 
Use contact cement to glue the leaves onto the base, putting a thin layer of glue on each side. Wait until the glue is tacky before attaching the pieces together. I recommend starting to shape the leaves as they dry around the bracer as you attach them. Attach all three leaves starting from the largest. Once all leaves are attached to the base, allow them to dry. Once dry, Plasti Dip each bracer in the front and the back. I recommend three coats of Plasti Dip. Please use proper safety equipment. It was awkward to try and get into the underlaps of the leaves, but you can see if you miss any areas and correct it as you go. Once dry, you can paint them as you desire. I recommend using acrylic paint, and I like the leathery look best that I achieved via sponging. But this is the fun part where you can be as creative as you want. Seal the paint with acrylic paint seal. Then add your favorite closure. I recommend a quarter inch gold grommets. I personally like how they popped against the green and brown. And with that, they're complete. Enjoy your bracers and good luck on your adventure. If you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to like and subscribe. To show off your hard work, tag me at Tilly Boom Cosplay, and I'd love to see your finished pieces. Thank you, and I will see you next time.